Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated releases of 2022. Now, as we discussed in my stats video, I'm not big on keeping track of like debut authors, what's new and coming out in that regard. So this is not going to contain things like that. This is mainly going to be sequels in series that I've already started or I'm up to date on and I'm anticipating the next release. It's also going to be books from like my auto buy and my favorite authors who I do check in on and see what they have coming up in the coming year. There are probably going to be some things that I've missed. I'm not super good at keeping track track of upcoming releases because I know that if it's a book that I'm interested in that it's going to come across my radar closer to its release and then I'll kind of become more aware of it. I don't, I just don't look forward to things really. I had an existential crisis a couple of weeks ago when I realized that this is because I'm normally used to disappointment or I fear disappointment so I don't bother looking forward to things in terms of book release. I do it with everything but in terms of book releases I guess it's in case the date is pushed back and I've hyped myself up for having this book on this specific day and it's not going to arrive on that specific day but I will be going through these in order. I have done it the entire year, but obviously as we get later into the year, there's gonna be things missing because things haven't even been announced yet. And a lot of the ones towards the end of the year don't have like covers or dates. Some of them just have like a rough date, like a month <laughs> in the year. So some of them may not even come out this year, but this is based on the research that I've done. I always get when I make these videos, questions about where I find out about new releases. So I check all of my auto buy authors, just type them into Goodreads, see if they have anything coming out. I also have a spreadsheet where I keep track of all the series that I'm reading. Anything I know that isn't complete, I go and check and see if they have a release date for the next book in the series. And one that I use, which is the first thing that I go to, is if you go on to Goodreads and then go to the browse section, it says upcoming releases and it will give you a list of books that are being released every single month based on the authors that are on your Goodreads shelves. So I go through there and pick out all of the new releases that I'm probably going to be buying, but they only go like six months in advance, so I could only get information up to June of this year from there. But starting off right at the beginning of the year in January, as I am making this video towards the end of January, a couple of these have already been released. The first one I have is Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton. This one was released on the 4th of January and I have already read it. I've just posted my vlog where I read this one. This is the fourth book in the Fortuna Swan series, which is one of my favorite series of all time and it is an indie self-published fairy romance story. It does have more like more paranormal creatures but it starts off as a fairy romance about this woman called Fortuna who is a nightmare so she can sense people's fears and make them believe that they're experiencing them and she is the last of her kind. Her brother went missing two years prior to the start of the story and she cannot find a single trace of him. That is up until a very attractive and powerful fairy male approaches her and says that he knows where her brother is and he can take her directly to him providing that she marries him. I absolutely love this series. This one in particular was also my favorite installment in the series so far. It is a 700 page behemoth and it is available now. The second of the January releases is The Monarchs by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I did have an e arc of this on NetGalley. However, I'm a little bit late in reading this. It's going to be the next book that I pick up. So I do have a finished copy now as well. But this is the sequel to The Ravens, which is a new adult contemporary fantasy that is set in this sorority of witches and we have two perspectives. One of them is a legacy member of the sorority who wants to become the president and the other one is somebody who is new to the university and doesn't even know that she has magical powers and even though they don't really like each other they kind of have to band together with the rest of the sorority to find out who is responsible for all of these sorority members that are going missing. I really loved the first book in this series. It's like a fun witchy slasher kind of book. Nothing too deep but really fun and an enjoyable read and I'm really excited to get into the monarchs. This one was released on the 11th of January. Next up we have of course my most anticipated release of the year which is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. This one is released on the 15th of February and it is of course the sequel to House of Earth and Blood. This one is the second book in Sarah J Maas's adult urban fantasy series where we're following a half fey woman called Bryce Quinlan who is tasked with investigating this string of murders. The authorities thought that they'd already captured the murderer. However, 
two years after this capture, the murders start up again and they ask Bryce to look into it because she has a personal connection to this case. And as it is quite a dangerous task, they assign the fallen angel Hunt Athelar to accompany her. Hives of Earth and Blood, when I read it in 2020, was one of my favourite books ever. It, like, my favourite book ever. I was obsessed with it. I still am. So, as you can guess, I am highly anticipating House of Sky and Breath and I will be reading it as soon as it arrives, no matter what I'm in the middle of. And there will be, like, a dedicated spoiler reading vlog to it and all of that stuff. For the 1st of March, we have a book that I've received an arc of just this morning, which is Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in the Bellinger Sisters series, and it is an adult contemporary romance. I haven't read the first book in this series. It happened one summer yet, but I did pick it up on Amron from Booked and Busy's recommendation. So I think I'm going to be doing a romance reading vlog where I read both of these. But this is a series of fisherman romances, which like I haven't read anything from Tessa Bailey yet, but I'm particularly drawn to this series because you know, like a nice, a nice rugged fisherman, how could I not want to read that? But this one is about a crab fisherman who is notorious with the ladies. He's a bit of a ladies man, a bit of a charmer. And when he meets Hannah Bellinger, she is immune to his charm. Now he doesn't want to ruin anything with her by attempting to go for a fling and she just wants to be friends so I'm guessing that this is going to be a friends to lovers story. I heard great things about Tessa Bailey and I'm really excited to read both of the books that have been published or will be published when this is out in March in this series so far. Also on the 1st of March we have one that I was a little bit unsure about whether I wanted to put it on this list. I have pre-ordered it but I actually think I'm going to cancel my pre-order because I have a feeling it's going to be a book for a book box. But this one is Gallant by V. Schwab. The reason why I wasn't sure about putting it in my anticipated releases is because V. Schwab is a very hit or miss author for me. I absolutely adore The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and the Vicious duology, but I was very underwhelmed when I read The Monsters of Verity duology and also Dark Shade of Magic. So she's an author where I do buy her books and I do give them all a try because some of her work I have loved but I don't get overly excited for her books because I know there's a good chance that I'm not going to enjoy them. But this one I don't know very much about. I think it's a YA fantasy. I think it's possibly a standalone and it's also I think a little bit of a haunted house story. It follows this girl who's grown up in this boarding school for girls but she gets a letter inviting her home. And I think the house is called Gallant but when she gets there nobody is expecting her and the people who are there are a little bit hostile. On the 15th of March we have The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is book four in the Blood and Ash series, which is a high fantasy slash paranormal romance series about this girl called Poppy, who is the maiden. She's kept in captivity, but it doesn't seem like captivity to her, I guess. But she's now to be looked upon, never to be touched, never to experience pleasure up until the day of her ascension. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding what the Ascension actually is because nobody will tell her and the love interest in this story is one of her guards who is tasked with guarding her until her Ascension called Hawk. The paranormal elements in here are revealed throughout the first book so I don't like to say them but if you want to know it's pretty easy to find online because some people do just say what the paranormal elements are but I was very disappointed by book three in this series. I am going to continue because I really enjoyed book one and two and I really like where book three left off like the last 50-60 pages of book three were five star material. The rest was not very good in my opinion. So I'm really excited to see where the story goes from that. I'm just hoping it's a little bit better than book three because I'll be really upset if this series starts to go dramatically downhill. The next one is released on the 14th of April but I do think that it may have an earlier release in the US because I've also found a date for this book for February but that is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. This is the sequel to Amari and the Night Brothers which is a children's fantasy series about this girl called Amari whose brother has gone missing. She knows that he has this top secret super dangerous job but she has no idea what it is and after he's been missing for a while she she gets an invitation to, I think it's the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, where she goes and is initiated into the summer camp where you can train in a variety of weird, wonderful, magical areas. And Amari decides to follow in her brother's footsteps and go down the secret agent track to see if that will bring her any closer to finding out what actually happened to her brother. For the 10th of May, we have another one that I'm a little bit unsure about, and that one is Miss Rule by Heather Walter. This is the sequel to Malice, which I read in 2021. It is a new adult Sleeping Beauty retelling told from the perspective of the villain, and it is also sapphic, where the villain, who is 
essentially Maleficent falls in love with Aurora. So I did enjoy Malice enough. It went a little bit on the YA side up until the end where it started to build up a little more to what I wanted from it. But at this point, I already have some distance from Malice. I enjoyed it, didn't adore it. So I think I'm going to decide whether I pick up the sequel to this. It is only a duology, but I'm going to decide a little bit close to the time whether I do want to continue and prioritize this one. For the 19th of May, we have Glow by Raven Kennedy. This is the fourth book in the Pleated Prisoner series, which is an adult indie high fantasy romance King Midas retelling. At this point, I have only read book one, Guild, which was mainly set up for the series, but there was a whole ton of stuff that I really, really loved in Guild. And I've heard that the series just gets better and better as it goes on. Essentially, one of the reasons why I love this so much is one, actually, it's really well thought out, well developed it has a decent fantasy plot line in there alongside some romantic elements and two I had some ideas about what a King Midas retelling would be when I went into it and I think it's going to be completely different from what I expected. I am also planning on reading books two and three very soon before the middle of February because I am interviewing Raven Kennedy on my channel as well so by the time it gets to the release of Glow on the 19th of May I should be all caught up. Another indie high fantasy romance is the Adequate Air by Danielle L. Jensen. This one is released on the 24th of May. It is technically already out because these books are released as Audible exclusives before they come to print, but as I've read all of the series physically, I am waiting for the physical release, which I do believe is going to be in May. And this one is actually a series of duologies. So because this is book three, it is the start of a new duology, and I'm not entirely sure where the story is going to go. But in book one, we are following a girl who has been raised along with her sisters with the intent of eventually marrying a king of another kingdom to fulfill a peace treaty that was constructed to end a war and the king has put all of his daughters in this secluded location and trained them to be assassins so when it comes to fulfilling this treaty his daughter will be in a prime position to assassinate the king of this opposing kingdom. Really loved the first two books like Plated Prisoner it has a very well thought out like political fantasy plot in it as well as some steamy slow burn enemies to lovers romance. I'm really excited to see where the series goes with the start of this next duology. A book that I'm going to be buying regardless even though I'm not caught up on the series is Blade Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This one is released on the 28th of June. Victoria Aveyard wrote the Red Queen series which is one of my favorite series ever and last year she released Realm Breaker which I kept saying I really wanted to read. Still haven't gotten to yet but as she's kind of an auto buy author for me I will probably be picking up Realm Breaker regardless of it, if I can get to it yet and I still don't know very much about this because I haven't read the first book but it is a YA multi-perspective high fantasy series. On the 5th of July we have one of my most anticipated releases which is Laura Olympus Volume 2 by Rachel Smith. This is a bind up of a webcomic series which is an adult fantasy romance Hades and Persephone retelling. There's a whole ton of other gods in there as well but I read Volume 1 in December and was absolutely blown away and I don't want to read them on web too because I'll be really upset if I'm up to date and have to read them weekly and I also just generally don't like reading comics or anything graphic on a screen. So I'm really excited for volume two because book one was just 400 pages of mutual pining as it is like the beginning of the story. It was also really really funny, really relatable. I had a great time with it and I'm so excited for volume two. Jumping up quite a bit on the 27th of September we have Kingdom of the Feared by Kerry Maniscalco. Still have not read Kingdom of the Cursed which is book two in this series but I have the fairy loot exclusives of book one and two so I will be trying to get the fairly exclusive of book three as well but this is a high fantasy series that starts off YA I believe that the second book is new adult and it is following this girl called Amelia who lives in I think it's Sicily it's in Italy anyway and her family owns a trattoria so there's a lot of mention of food in this book which um just made me really hungry and <laughs> made me wish I was back in Rome but she is a twin and her twin sister is murdered so Amelia starts to dabble in dark magic to try and find out what happened to her sister and in doing so she accidentally summons a prince of hell. On the 4th of October we have A Curse of Queens by Amanda Boucher. This is the first book in the spin-off from the Kingmaker Chronicles which is an adult fantasy romance that follows a girl who is in hiding in a circus. She is a powerful magic wielder and she's run away from home for some reason and this guy whose family have just taken over a territory in this world is looking for somebody who's very powerful 
waterfall with magic to help his family solidify the hold they have over this area. So when he finds the main character, he drags her off to the kingdom that his family are ruling over to help them with the political agenda. I believe that the spin-off series is going to be following a member of the Love Interest Warband from the first series. At this point, I have only read the first book in this series, but I do want to catch up throughout this year so that I'm ready for that spin-off. Another one of my most anticipated releases is out on the 13th of October, and that is Silverborn, The Mystery of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This one is the fourth book in the Nevermore series. It's a children's fantasy series, one of my favourite series of all time. I just absolutely adore it. And in this one, we are following a young girl called Morrigan Crow, who is a cursed child. She is destined to die on her, I think it's her 12th or 13th birthday, and she attends her town's bidding day, which is where influential people in the town come to take on children as apprentices, and she doesn't think that she will get any bids. However, she does get a few, one of which is from Jupiter North, who whisks her away to the magical world of Nevermore, and enrolls her into a series of trials that will gain her entry into the One Sock Society. Absolutely obsessed with this series. It's so magical, whimsical, wonderful, and believable as well, and I'm so hyped for book four. The next ones all have less solid dates, but this is what it says for them on Goodreads. The first one is the 25th of October, and that is The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake, which is the sequel to The Atlas Six. The Atlas Six is an adult dark academia fantasy that follows this group of very gifted people, the most gifted people of their generation, who are selected by a guy called Atlas Blakely to gain entry into the Alexandrian society. They don't have to do a competition or anything like that, but they do have this one year period, and at the end of this period, only five of the six are going to actually make it through into the Alexandrian society. I really liked the Atlas Six, I really liked the atmosphere, and I really liked how everything came together towards the end. It actually really surprised me, so I'm really excited to see where the sequel takes it. For the 15th of November, we have The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson. I actually, for some reason, I thought this was being released in July, but Goodreads says the 15th of November. This is the seventh book in the Mistborn series. So it's the fourth book in the second era. If you guys are unaware of what Mistborn is, it is an adult epic high fantasy series starting off with this guy called Kelsia, who is putting together a gifted team of Alamancers to overthrow the Dark Lord and the final empire. So Alamancy is the ability to ingest metal and harness their abilities. And if you can harness the abilities of all of the metals, then you are a Mistborn. Kelsia himself is a Mistborn and he stumbles across another one, which he brings onto the team. And this is essentially a high story. They're trying to overthrow the government. Now, the second era of Miss Bond is set 300 years after the events of the first trilogy, so it starts with, like, book four in the Miss Bond series. I have currently not started the second era of Miss Bond, but because there is a date for book four, I think I'm going to aim to be caught up by that date so I can read The Lost Metal when it's released. You're gonna call me really optimistic for having this on here. I have seen three, I think, release dates for this book and not one of them are confirmed officially in any way, shape, or form. But the book in question is Lightbringer by Pierce Brown, which is book six in the Red Rising series. Red Rising is an adult sci-fi story. It has a martial fantasy plot line. It also has like a dystopian society in there as well. But it's following this guy called Darrow, who is a red. And in the caste system of this universe, reds are right at the bottom and golds are right at the top. The reds believe that they are mining for this valuable resource called Helium-3 that will allow people to terraform the galaxy and all of the planets so that everyone can escape the dying planet Earth. However, after Darrow's wife orchestrates her own capture and execution to spur Darrow into action, he ends up going to the surface of the planet and realises that it's already terraformed and has been for a very long time and his people are essentially being kept in slavery. So Darrow then joins up with a rebellion to infiltrate the golds and tear them apart from the inside side. One of my favourite series ever, Golden Sun, was my favourite book of 2021 and I have intentionally not read books four and five because I know that Pierce Brown likes his cliffhangers and there is no official release date for book six. However, at the minute, Goodreads has it down for the 7th of December 2022. I've also seen an audiobook site that has pre-orders up and I think the release date on that was sometime in July. And I'm pretty sure Amazon has a different release date that is also towards the end end of the year. So nothing has been officially confirmed 
these are just dates that are popping up here there and everywhere and have been for the last couple of months but i would love to be able to read the second trilogy this year and i just need a confirmation on that release date so that i can dive in and i'm just i'm so excited because i love red rising so much it is literally one of my favorite series ever and then the final one that i have to talk about just says 2022 on goodreads it doesn't even have a title yet but the first book was only released in i think it was november 2021 so that is probably why but that is the sequel to all of us villains by amanda foodie and christine lynn herman this is a young adult fantasy that is set in this town where every 20 years the seven influential magical families of the town put seven of their children like teenagers into a tournament ground where they have to fight to the death for control of the high magic and whoever wins will gain that control for their family for the next 20 years i really liked the first book actually it wasn't quite as villainous as i would like but the plot did thicken substantially throughout the book to a point where i'm really excited for the sequel and i do anticipate this being released in like october november November, December. I'm just assuming that it is because the first book was released so recently that there is no solid date for the second book as well and this one is just a duology so when the second book is out the series is done. But there you have it those are all of my anticipated releases for 2022. As I mentioned at the beginning there's not any debuts or anything in here there are books that are going to be coming out throughout the year i imagine that i will be getting excited about and will end up purchasing reading loving all of that kind of stuff i may have also forgotten some as well because like i said i'm not super on top of keeping track of new releases and i may make a follow-up video of this as well halfway through the year when we do have some more announcements and more concrete release dates for books that are coming out from like july through to december but down in the comments please let me know what your guys most anticipated release for 20 2022 is and aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you head to my description box you'll find links to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as link to my bookish candle website the instagram for that and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you go when nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no